In part one of this video series, we discuss how we can simulate quantum circuits in Qiskit by using the quantum info module. We then look into the basic simulator, which helped us overcome some of the limitations the state vector and density matrix classes had when it came to running simulations with mid-circuit measurements. Now in this video, we will look into another simulator, the air simulator, which is an efficient simulator implemented in C++ that has a lot of additional features not available in the basic simulator. So for that, let's look at some concrete examples of things we can do with the air simulator that we can do with the basic simulator. So let's say, for example, that we have the following circuit where we have a Hadamard gate followed by a measurement block. Now, this measurement will result in either a zero or a one with 50% probability. This will in turn activate this Hadamard gate. So 50% of the time we get a zero, so the Hadamard doesn't get activated, so we get state zero, zero at the output. Now when we measure a one, the Hadamard does get activated, so we get the state at the output one tensored superposition of zero plus one. Now how can we simulate something like this? where we are not interested in the counts in the classical register, but the actual state at the output. Well, we looked into this before, and we know that we can use the state vector class because it does not support measurement blocks, right? If we run this, we're gonna get an error here. And then if we use the basic simulator to try to get the counts, well, that's only gonna give us information about what's in the classical registers, right? So here we're only performing a measurement in the top qubit, so we just get that half of the time we're measuring zero and half of the time we're measuring one, but we don't know what the projected state is for each of these results. So here's where the air simulator can come in and help. So for that, let's first import it, so from Qiskit, air, and this is very important, Qiskit air is a separate package, it's not part of the Qiskit package, so we need to install this separately. We're going to import the air simulator. So let's create first an object for that simulator, similar to what we did for the basic simulator. And once we have instantiated that object, this enables a new feature here that we can use in our quantum circuit which is the safe state vector function. So if we introduce this inner circuit, it will show up as, a, as an object where the simulation will return the state vector at that point. So if we go down here, we will run a simulation in a very similar way to what we were doing for the basic simulator. So let's copy and paste all this. So let's call this new circuit QC air, where we're going to transpile that new circuit that has that safe state vector uh, object. And here we're gonna uh, use the backend, uh, the air simulator. And then we're, we're gonna run that simulation using the air simulator for our air circuit. But here we're not interested in running this many times. We just want to, for example, run it once and look at the state at the output. So we can just remove the, the number of shots. Similarly, we're not interested in getting the counts. What we want is to get the state vector at the output. So we can use this helper method called get state vector. And let's call this, for example, psi. And if we now display psi at the output, we get the equal superposition state 1011. So if we go up here, we see that that's what we were expecting half of the time, the state one zero plus one one. Now, as you can see, this isn't giving us both options and it's because if we perform one measurement and it just projected with equal probability one of these two options. So if we were to run the simulation many times, 50% of the time we will get this, but 50% of the time we should get zero zero. So let's run it again and we got zero zero, we got the other one, then this one again, and if we run this many times, we should see half of the time one state and half of the time the other. So that's one of the options where the air simulator differs from the basic simulator. So if, for example, we were to replace all of this, so let's say here we want to use the 
basic simulator instead, right? We will see that if we run this, we'll get an error because the basic simulator does not have the safe state vector uh, capability. So here we can see we have an error and it says no state vector for experiment none. It's important to also highlight that we don't need to have this object at the end of our circuit. So we can have another uh, example where we have a large circuit, let's say, followed by measurements at the output. And let's say we're interested in finding the state vector somewhere in between uh, our circuit. So we can introduce that object anywhere we want. So we can do the save state vector here. And now we have it in, at this point. And then we can run a simulation. Let's just actually copy and paste what we had here above, where we transpile our circuit again using the air simulator. And when we run this, we can see that now we get the state for this circuit, but not all the way at the output where we have entangled all four qubits, but only up to the, the point where we have entangled the first two. So that's clearly a very nice feature that is not available in the Qiskit package. An additional feature from the uh, Qiskit Air package is the availability of efficient simulators. So let's look into that. So let's say we create a circuit where we're going to entangle many qubits. So let's say, uh, let's show it for, let's say five qubits. So this is just a GHC generating circuit where we can change the value of, of qubits we want. And we want to see how the basic simulator compares with this air simulator. So we can basically run a simulation using the basic simulator for this new circuit and then print the counts, for example, but we're gonna look at how long it takes. So this took about eight milliseconds, but now let's do the same thing with the air simulator. And here we see that it took about the same amount of time. But what if we increase this to the maximum number of qubits we can simulate with the basic simulator? So let's say 24 qubits and rerun this. We see it took almost eight seconds with the basic simulator. And with air, it only took 23 milliseconds. So that's a clear advantage of using Qiskit Air when we have a lot of qubits. Furthermore, Qiskit Air has additional methods of simulation that are even more efficient for certain types of circuits. So let's say here, we're going to clearly specify what method to use. So, so if we don't specify this, um, Qiskit Air defaults to an automatic option which is selected based on the type of circuit and if there's uh, noise in the circuit or not. But here we're gonna force it to use the state vector simulator, which is uh, pretty standard. And then we're gonna copy and paste this down here and use the matrix product state simulator. And now let's change this to, for example, 50 qubits. So with 50 qubits, the state vector simulator will throw an error saying that we don't have sufficient memory to run that simulation. But if we do it with the matrix product state, this is a, an optimized simulator for this type of circuits and we can still run it with 50 qubits and it takes 50 milliseconds. So this is another great feature of the air simulators. Lastly, we can also use the air simulator to add noise to our circuits. So we can, for example, create a simple entangling circuit. We can run a simulation again using Qiskit Air with no noise. If we now look at the result of the circuit, we see we get about 50% of the time state 00 and 50% 1 1. Now Qiskit Air has this noise module that we can use to add noise to our circuit and I won't go into the details of this um, but we're just adding some probability of error to our CX gate in the circuit. And if we run that simulation and now compare the result of our ideal simulation with a noisy simulation, we can see that there's a clear difference where the noisy simulation now also shows mistakenly states 0, 0, 0, 1 and 1, 0. 
So in summary, we want to use the air simulator instead of, for example, the basic simulator when we need to find the counts of large circuits because air has efficient simulators or when we need to find the state vector or the density matrix of a circuit that has measurement blocks in it or when we need to add noise to our circuit. The example I show was very simple, but there are more sophisticated models that we can incorporate and run them on Qiskit Air. Now we don't wanna use the simulator if what we need to do is to match the output format that is required for the Qiskit IBM runtime. And that's what we're gonna be covering in the next few videos. Now, Qiskit Air has its own version of primitives, the sampler and estimator, but as I mentioned in the first video, as of late April, early May, the sampler and estimator in Qiskit Air are the old version of it. Since there's already a version two, it's very, very likely these are gonna get deprecated very soon. So I don't wanna cover these in, in the next few videos. So we'll, we'll just ignore them, but we will show a different way in which we can use the Qiskit Air simulators within the Qiskit IBM runtime. So in the next video, we'll start covering what primitives are and how we adapt our code to use this new type of instructions.